In the previous lesson, we saw that you could get an almost long run total cost curve of essentially arbitrary shape, and I just picked a rather unusual shape in order to demonstrate that you could generate it from either a type 1 or a type 2 short run total cost curves. But now it's time to consider systematically the sorts of long run total cost curves that economists traditionally look at. And it's going to turn out that the one I've drawn on the screen is not one that we usually look at. It's a possibility. There are lots of possibilities. But we're going to concentrate from now on on the traditional shapes. In order to introduce these traditional shapes, think back to when we first learned about production functions. And one of the ideas we learned about was returns to scale. So in particular, we talked about constant returns to scale. and also increasing returns to scale, decreasing returns to scale. And I'm going to talk about one final case a little bit later on. Consider long run average cost. It's long run total cost divided by output. Returns to scale is a long run concept because returns to scale is changing the scale of the enterprise, which means all the inputs. You double, for example, all the inputs. That's the way we talked about it. So that's clearly a long run concept. It's not a short run concept where everything is fixed except for one input. Now, suppose you had constant returns to scale, and suppose you doubled. all the inputs. Well, we know that it, since it's constant returns to scale, that'll result in a doubling of output. In other words, this denominator is going to get multiplied by 2. Now, let's think about what happens to long-run costs. If you double all the inputs, that means you buy twice as much fertilizer and twice as much water as you did before. Well, it's going to cost you twice as much. Because again, the firm takes input prices as given, so they're constant. So you buy twice as much, you pay twice as much. And therefore, the numerator is going to get multiplied by 2. Well, if the numerator gets multiplied by 2 and the denominator gets multiplied by 2, the whole thing is unchanged. Which means that with constant returns to scale, the long run average cost curve never changes. The long run average cost never changes. Q, long run average cost is dollars per bushel. Because up here, it's this fraction, and the numerator is in dollars, and the denominator is in bushels. Let's think about increasing returns to scale. Again, look at long run average cost. It's long run total cost divided by quantity. Suppose you double all inputs. With increasing returns to scale, that means you more than double output. Now, let's think about the fraction. You more than double output, and so the denominator gets multiplied by something that's bigger than 2. Let's think about the numerator. How do your costs change when you double all the inputs? When you buy twice as much stuff, you have to pay twice as much. So the numerator gets multiplied by 2. Now, think about a fraction. You multiply the numerator by 2, and you multiply the denominator by something bigger than 2, like 3 or 4 or 2.5. Well, the whole fraction goes down. And so this whole fraction is going to go down. Now, let's think about the graph.
we've doubled all the inputs and that led to more than doubling the outputs. So the output's gone up. Let's see, this is the old output and this is the new output. Output's gone up. It's more than doubled. Perhaps I should have drawn the new a little bit further to the right, but it doesn't matter for this point. So here's the old long run average cost. The new one is below the old one. That, that's this arrow. The new one is below the old one. The, as, as you move to the right, as you go from the old to the new new situation, you got more output. You double all the inputs. You have more output. So the new output is bigger than the old output. But long run average cost has fallen. That's what the yellow highlighter shows. So long run average cost falls. How about decreasing return to scale? Long run average cost is long run total cost divided by Q. Double all inputs. That leads to a less than doubling of output. Output still goes up, it just less than doubles. So, the denominator gets multiplied by something between 1 and 2. The numerator gets multiplied by, well, if you double all the inputs, you buy twice as much stuff, you have to pay twice as much. So the numerator gets multiplied by 2. So the numerator gets multiplied by 2, and the denominator gets multiplied by something like 1 and a half then the whole thing goes up. Okay, so this whole thing goes up. Let's draw the graph. Q. Now what's happened, again, is that the new Q is is bigger than the old Q. Because quantity does go up when you double all inputs. Uh, corn output does go up when you double all the inputs. So the old corn output is to the right. The new corn output is to the right of the old corn output. Long run average cost has gone up. So that's the pattern. Intuitively, when you have increasing returns to scale, the bigger you are, the better things are, because you have increasing returns to scale. And what does better mean? Well, one interpretation of better is l average cost falls. With decreasing returns to scale, as you get bigger, bad things happen. How does that get reflected? Your costs, your average costs go up. So that's one way of remembering the connection. Now let's see what this implies. for long run total cost. In the early part of the semester, when we studied how to go from average and marginal to total, we worked a lot on marginal. Average we only used to determine the initial uh, position at, at x equals 0 at, on the, the left hand edge of the graph. We don't have marginal here, we have average. But it's since these are very simple situations, it's not hard to figure out what the whole thing looks like. In the first case, with constant returns to scale, a flat long run average cost generates a straight line for long run total cost. Now here's one thing to remember. At q equals 0, long run total cost is equal to 0. In the long run, if you don't want to produce any corn, you don't have to buy any inputs at all, and therefore your cost is 0. So all these graphs are going to start at 0. All these long run total cost curves are going to start at 0.
To see that in constant returns to scale, I've drawn it correctly, just imagine what some of the lines for average would look like. At this Q, the average line would be here. At this Q, the average line would be here. At this Q, the average line would be here. So those averages are all the same. And so uh, I'm correct that the average cost doesn't change. How about the second case? Increasing returns to scale. Longer than average cost is falling. I claim that longer total cost is going to have to look like this. Because the average, then, would, uh, would be falling, and you want the average to be falling. Similarly, with increasing returns, with decreasing returns of scale, the third case, I claim that the average is going to look like this. I'm sorry, the longer total cost is going to look like that because the averages will look like this. And those are clearly getting steeper, so longer average cost is rising, which is what you want. On exams, I'll call these cases by their official names, constant returns to scale, increasing returns to scale, decreasing returns to scale. But for pedagogical purposes, I'm going to use a uh, shorthand as follows. Constant returns to scale, I'm going to refer to as case A. Increasing returns to scale as case B. Decreasing returns to scale as case C, or type A, type B, type C. So these are the long run types. In other words, we're going to have long run types, types A, B, C, and I'm going to add another one, D, which is a hybrid. It's going to look like this. Its long run total cost is going to have this shape. First concave and then convex. And that's going to generate a long run average cost. Well, what'll that be? First, going to fall, it'll meet its lowest point there, and then it'll start to 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 rise again. So, let's see here, I'm drawing it in in black. Long run average cost is going to be U shaped. So, that's type D. I need an official name for type D. So the official name for type D, the one that will appear on exams, is going to be first increasing and then decreasing returns to scale. Because on the left hand part, it looks like the increasing returns to scale with average costs falling and total costs concave. On the right hand part, it looks like decreasing returns to scale with average costs rising and total cost being convex. So type D is going to be called first increasing and then decreasing returns to scale on an exam. So we have types A, B, C, and D. Constant returns to scale, increasing returns to scale, decreasing returns to scale, and finally first increasing and then decreasing returns to scale. We need to demonstrate now that any one of these long run cost curves could have been derived from a short run cost curve, either from type 1 or from type 2 in the short run. In other words, there are eight cases A, B, C, and D with type 1, and A, B, C, and D with type 2. And that demonstration is what we'll start next. <laughs>